Guys, what is up? It is an exciting day because at long last, after many, many months of waiting, I have finally received my brand new Sony A6700 camera. And this is what, going forward, all the content here on the channel is gonna be getting recorded on. And I'm upgrading from my tried and trusty Sony A6400, which I upgraded to earlier in the summer. Now this thing has been an absolute workhorse and I do not discredit or give any fault to this guy. If you're a hobbyist, this is a great camera to get. And the price is really good because now there's the 65, 66, and 6700. Not to discredit it or say it didn't do a good job. It did a great job. But there are five key reasons that I was compelled to upgrade from the 6400 to the A6700. And I'm gonna break those down for you now. So the first major difference between these two camera bodies is image stabilization. Now, the A6400, if you're using it on a tripod, it is not gonna give you much trouble, but it does not have in-body image stabilization. So you need to get a lens that has image stabilization if you want to ensure that your images are crystal clear. The A6700 does have sensor shift in-body image stabilization, longer focal lengths, slower shutter speeds, you're gonna get a much stabler image and you don't necessarily need to rely or use or own a lens with built-in image stabilization. Those are typically more expensive. Now, the second reason I really felt compelled to upgrade is because of the functionality and the intelligence in the processing unit of the A6700. The 6400 does a good job of shooting people, but I have a dog and I like to shoot wildlife and outdoor photography. And the A6400 processor just doesn't quite get what that stuff is. It doesn't track it very well. It's not able to lock on. The A6400 was actually released in 2019, so this is not unexpected. But the new A67 has the Bionics XR chip, and it can interpret not just people, but animals, birds, planes, trains, insects. The AI processor system inside this chip is just so much smarter. It can really take things up to the next level. And this means not only improved focusing, but also improved tracking. And because I do a lot of video, this is absolutely key because nothing sucks more than having a video that won't focus properly and won't lock on. And since we're talking about focus and artificial processing, artificial intelligence, and how that improves the 6700 experience, well, we can talk about two more things, which weren't necessarily key, but together become point number three. This guy, the A6700 has breathing compensation and it does a fantastic job much better than the a6400 and even with a great lens like my 16 to 35 millimeter g master here which is a fantastic lens it does breathe from time to time if you've seen some of my most recent videos that i've shot on this lens you might have even noticed a couple times where there's some focus breathing happening it drives me crazy i try to edit over it just in a way so you can't tell but it is there and the a6700 just does a much better job of compensating for that. The other cool thing the A67 can do because, again, of that processor unit is auto framing. Now, this is a feature found in other Sony cameras, primarily ones more oriented on video, but I am a solo YouTube and content creator, so this feature will allow it to track me in real time as I'm bouncing around. This will frame it and make it look basically like I have my own cameraman. This is a really cool feature. And so together, this kind of comes together to be point number three. Now, point number four, this is an easy one. And I think every photographer or videographer can relate to this. And this is the battery life. The A6700 battery life is just so much better. Now, the A6400, it wasn't necessarily a slouch. I could probably get about an hour's worth of recording on it or a couple of days worth of shooting. So if I had ever wanted to do a longer piece of content or any of the longer videos that I've done, the A6400 battery was just draining down way too fast. But the 6700 battery is larger. It's the larger Sony battery style. I don't have a video benchmark, but the photo benchmark, 570 photos on the A6700, versus 410 photos on the A6400. So significant improvement, and that's like another day of shooting for some people. This really could mean that if, as long as you left with a full battery charge in the A6700, you could get a full day's worth of shoot if you're out doing a wedding or something. I think this is a huge improvement, and yeah, anybody in the same boat with an older camera or one with a smaller battery like the A6400 could totally relate to this and would absolutely agree that this is a significant improvement. Now, the last big change for me change number five that really made me excited for this camera was just the overall changes to its design. So the first thing you'll notice is a significantly larger grip on the front. 
And because I have big hands, that makes this A6700 way easier for me to hold versus this A6400. I actually had to go and buy a camera grip because I just felt like this was really cramping my hand up. So this is much more natural feeling for me. That right there is huge. The other big change, of course, is to the screen. The A6400 screen flips up and the A6700 screen flips out this way and is, of course, fully articulating. And it is a touch screen and the touchscreen UI has been dramatically improved from the 6400 to do a lot more and just be a lot more intuitive and easier to use and navigate, which is great because Sony cameras have crazy confusing and complicated menus. So having an easy UI system where you don't have to rely on this scroll wheel is great for navigating. The other big thing that the 6700 has that the A6400 doesn't is a adjusted version of the position here. So. On the 6700, you can quickly change with this bottom dial from photo to video to slow and quick. That is all on a dedicated scroller. On the 6400, they've just put it into the main dial, but that means all the functionalities are right here. On the 6700, they are all split out so you can have dedicated modes so you can get a lot more control this way. And one big autofocus on button right here, quick access menu button right here, a much bigger trigger button, which is great. All in all, it's just a significantly larger, and I know some people might say, oh, larger is not necessarily what I'm looking for, but if you have bigger hands, I just find this form factor so much more comfortable, so much easier to use, and having everything dedicated and able to be set individually is fantastic. Also, I love that the record for video is at the top because on the A6400, it's in the weirdest spot, it's here, on the side. So you, you naturally will reach up for the shutter button and it's up here and the video button when you want to start recording is there. Yes, you can customize and custom map this custom button over here, but even that is really small. So you, your finger naturally gravitates towards this, just much easier and overall better layout. And I think it's gonna really just speed up the workflow and allow you to get a little more customizable and everything is all independently controlled. Very nicely done. So guys, those are my top five reasons for switching to the A6700. What do you think about this camera? Let's have a conversation about it down in the comments below. Now, I am definitely not a professional photographer or videographer in any way, so I'm not gonna do a full review of the A6700, but I am definitely going to be sharing all the content I film on it right here on the channel. So definitely keep an eye out. Thank you for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.